Hello all, in this video we will see certain practical challenges in neural network training. So the basic challenges in neural network training, I mean usually phases are, first one is the problem of overfitting. And explain all of this. The second problem is the vanishing gradient. Another challenge is exploding gradient. And weight initialization. So these are the main challenges. There could be other challenges as well. But these are the main challenges when it comes to um, neural network training. Okay. So the first thing is overfitting. See, overfitting is when your model performs exactly well during training, but during testing of the accuracy of the model phase, we call it overfitting. That is, the model is excellent and it performs excellently during training, but when it comes to the testing phase, what happens is the model's performance will be very poor. See the problem, I will give you an example, the problem is actually with data. Um, for example, if we are not giving sufficient data for the model to learn, our fitting can happen. For example, if we are uh, training a system on um, in a classification of dogs and cats or understand the correct breed of, a dog, breed of dogs in total. So, if you are, uh, if you are training the image that is only very high, very huge size dogs like Labradors, uh, Golden Retrievers and all. So what happens is when you in input the image of a pup during testing, what happens is that it may classify this as a cat because it is very small in size, right? So uh, what you have to do is you have to give sufficient data so that the input data must be very diverse. I mean as the, the more the amount of training data, the, ability, the more will be the ability of the system to uh, perform the classification or decision making so the data should be I mean maximum amount of data should be given for the system then only it can work well so the first I mean overfitting happens when your system fails to um, generalize things for example um, see I hope you know that uh, underfitting is when your system um, folds I mean your system performs very bad during um, training also and both training. So if your data points are like this and if you are um, training uh, in the line of best fit or something like this, we call this underfitting because it was not uh, properly, uh, it could not properly classify the data points. So this is clearly the case of underfitting. But overfitting is when under the same data points, um, trying to draw it the same um, coordinate space also. So overfitting is when the model is, uh, I mean, doing things like this. See, the model is trying to generate, this is the line of best fit. In case of overfitting, that is the model adapts too much with the input data and it is not capable of generalizing well. So what happens is, when you give uh, data which is a bit different from this during testing, the system cannot do it because it is kind of tailor made to this particular data. So, so when we are giving data which is slightly different, um, it cannot do the job. So this is overfitting and what we need is actually a balanced fit. For example, I am drawing this very same training example again where um, rectangles are one class and triangles are the other class. So if it is um, balanced fit, the line of best fit will be something like this. So here the model is not uh, adapting too much to the data but this is quite generalized. So this is a balanced fit and this is what we need. So overfitting um, is actually a problem because the data will not be able to generalize to the input. I mean the input that we give at the end for testing. So it can be found during validation, you know that we have a validation set or holdout set which is actually used to tune the hyperparameters. Um, hope you know that uh, we have actually a training, from the whole data we will be having a training set 
the complete data will be trained on this training set then we have a validation set or a call down set so we have kept this set at heart so that we just want to check whether the system is working fine prior to the final testing so we have test set which is a final testing so um, this is actually a kind of um, intermediate testing to check whether the system is working fine if the performance is not satisfactory here or if we are detecting overfitting here you have to tune the hyperparameters to change the hyperparameters and train the system again so that you can get the best results at the end so that is overfitting so the solutions to overfitting and solution to overfitting is that you have to give sufficient data you have to add maximum data maximum diverse input so one solution to overfitting is add maximum data now if you do not have enough data what you can do is you can perform data augmentation see augmentation means that we are making necessary changes to the existing that data that we have so that the change data looks new data for example if it was the uh, image of a dog facing the left we can flip the image so that is the augmented image so that the dog will be now facing right so the system will treat it as a new data so um, in image processing you can use rotation by different degrees flipping zooming all of this to create and uh, to give the system an impact of new data okay so next thing that you can do is you can um, you can uh, reduce the complexity of the model because the you see here the line is a very complicated polynomial right and the line is a very curved line it means it's a very complicated line and that is how this overfitting happens so what you can do is you can reduce the complexity of the model so that the that, that the line of best fit is not that complicated the model is not that complicated so that the model doesn't overfit with the training data and it will be more capable of generalization another option is drop out see a drop out means you are for example in a neural network like this what you can do is you can so by reducing the complexity means you can reduce the number of layers in a neural network number of neurons in a layer or such thing see in case of drop out what we do is we exclude a certain unit of the neural network from learning for training that is we are ignoring a subset of nodes in the given layers during training that is we are dropping some layers out for example we are dropping um, this layer out when at the side of the layers we are um, we are completely removing or completely ignoring a layer so that the features um, and which must which would have been learned during that with the help of that layer will not be learned so that over importance will not be given to any set of features so that is the advantage of uh, drop out it is we are uh, not making anything over i mean more than more important than it must actually be so we are ignoring some part of the neural network uh, by giving a drop out by avoiding some part of the neural network we are training the system such that no feature will be given over importance so that is the concept of drop out so this is how we can um, avoid the problems of overfitting these are some solutions that is and maximum data as you have then if you do not have sufficient data perform data augmentation then try to reduce the complexity of the model by reducing the number of layers or number of neurons and layers then do drop outs drop out means this is actually parameter whose value used to be set at point n and 2 so drop out means that we do not be given giving much importance to different subsets of the neural network while training so that uh, no feature will be over counted or will be given over importance so that is how we avoid uh, we try to avoid overfitting now next is vanishing and exploiting gradient issues see now that uh if the uh, learning strategy of the network is gradient based um just like in back propagation in back propagation has been back propagation in deep tile so in back propagation we were calculating gradient so partial derivatives of the um, output the predicted output with respect to 
actual output then with respect to the uh, final value produced without activation function um, then partial derivative of the if you remember there will be partial derivative of the final output with respect to um, weight then I mean all these things right we were calculating lots of partial derivatives in back propagation and we learned back propagation and we were multiplying all those partial derivatives using a chain rule if you haven't seen the video of back propagation please do watch it first um, because we were taking uh, the partial derivatives we were traversing back from I mean from the last this output layer of the neural network to the previous layers and we were taking partial derivatives and we were multiplying all these partial derivatives to get the final weight updates and minus updates right so for getting those values we were multiplying gradients for so if there are n layers in a neural network we need to multiply um, nearly n partial derivatives to get the weight updates of the initial layer right because we are we are starting it from the we are starting it from the uh, final uh, layers of the neural network and we are propagating the error backwards to the initial layers right so we are uh, taking the partial derivative from this layer and we will be multiplying partial derivatives in each layer and we will get some weight update value and bias update value with the help of this weight update factor with the help of this partial derivatives right so in any way we are multiplying partial derivatives so if there are n layers there could be nearly um, n partial derivatives to be multiplied so what happens is if the partial derivatives are really small assume that they are less than 1 so you know that when we are multiplying numbers less than 1 what happens is in each multiplication the number will shrink even more right so at the end when we are multiplying 0.001 to 0.1 0 and all the number that we are getting will be very very small right so that means the weight update factor will become very small and finally when it uh, becomes uh, very close to zero no weight update will happen and the gradient is said to be vanished so that mm, the reason is when we are multiplying values less than 4 by 1 um, with, with, um, since we have lots of partial derivatives to be multiplied with a dense network what happens is when we multiply all these things the value of the partial derivative uh, as a, I mean, which was created as a result of the chain rule shrinks too much it shrinks exponentially and finally at some point it becomes very close to zero so this is the problem of vanishing gradient so when the gradient see if you remember a uh, new weight will be actually old weight minus the uh, chain in the uh, contribution of the weight and the error right so this is how we update the yeah so it starts with the contribution of uh, predicted value and the error then the final value of the predicted error just like that so yeah, so if the weight update is happening like W is equal to W minus the contribution of the weight in the error. Uh, this is how we update the weights, right? So when on multiplication of very small values, this becomes very close to zero and you can see that there are no up, no change in weight update, no considerable weight update. So if there are no weight updates at all, especially the neurons in the first layer actually have a very good insight to the core features of the input because uh, they are propagating the input to the next layer right so the weight of the value is very small um, if it is reaching close to zero there won't be any weight update at all so that the system does not learn anything at all so you can detect it when you know that the changes in the loss function the changes in the weight of it everything is very very small that is how you that is how you detect it. So uh, the model uh, will not be learned much and the weights updates will be very close to zero. So in that case the model will not be learning a thing. So that is vanishing gradient. See exploding gradient is just opposite of this. That is if the um, gradient values are really high, you know that on multiplication they will increase exponentially because in an n-layered network that would be nearly a partial derivative so when you multiply very big values they 
in, in, ex, they increase exponentially and they can explode meaning that the weight values could be and hence the weight update values will be very very large so that they make them in a numbers that is not a number kind of values when the this is larger than the allowed size in an architecture so what happens is the system will become very unstable it will be missing local minimas so local minima is actually uh, the minimum values of the error for example if the weight update is changing i mean the weight value here is changing rapidly with the weight value here will be missing this local minimum right so we will be missing local minimas and maybe the global minima too the system will be very unstable so this can be detected when the gradient and weight update changes and the loss function changes are very large during training so that is a problem with exploding gradient but there is a solution for exploding gradient and the solution is that uh, you have to clip the gradients at certain point that is if the gradient is growing behind beyond the particular limit just clip it check the gradient change in gradient or check the gradient values and if it is growing beyond the range just check click just clip the gradient values there and uh, this uh, weight initialization is also a problem because of the weights are very very small it can lead to vanishing gradient and then system will not be learning much of the weights values are very big good similar to the situation kind of exploding gradient and then uh, the system will be very unstable so the careful choice of weight values is is a must you can't initialize the weight values to zero anyway because you know that in input layer the input and weights are multiplied so when you do that of the weights in the initial layer are zero will get straight zeros and in atom layer so um, better not to initialize the weight weights are zeros you should initialize them to small random values so these are the practical changes in neural network overfitting vanishing gradient exploding gradient and uh, the problem with careful weight initialization hope this is clear thank you